It was the romantic age of travel when railroads were king. Today on AYL, we'll get a glimpse of that era with the recent visit of the big boy to Ogden. And we'll show you how to keep 1.2 million pounds of locomotive running. Then we'll visit the place where the railroad era became a reality. The big festivities may be over, but the experience goes on all summer long. And we'll show you how to make a do-it-yourself railroad trip across northwestern Utah. Blow the whistle and all aboard at your leisure station. Hundred and fifty years ago, two trains ended up nose to nose after racing each other all the way across the country. And with their cattle guards just feet apart, they drove the golden spike that connected a web of steel from one shore to the other. And we are walking on that grade right now. The very grade that connected the country from east to west 150 years ago. And you get to share that history with us. Now, this is not a history lesson. This is hands-on. Well, we went on, I think, a wonderful tour where we got a chance to see the Transcontinental Railroad in Utah as it would be in 1860s. Well, this changed the world. This was uh, the equivalent of the moonshot at this time. I mean, prior to this time, uh, if you wanted to travel from New York to San Francisco or wherever the case may be, it was very arduous. You'd either have to go to Panama and cross the Isthmus, you'd have to go around the Cape. It, it is absolutely amazing to think that men with shovels move that much earth and you're driving in many of the places along the original rail bed of the Transcontinental Railroad. You can take a mountain bike, you can, you can take, a, we went in automobiles today, but four, four wheelers, virtually anything that you can you know, take out along that road. You know, they're going to see a, a lot of marshland. They're going to see the Great Salt Lake. They're going to see views unencumbered by any, uh, uh, anything other than just uh, the natural landscape. That what they'll see is that grade built by all these people by hand uh, completing the railroad. They'll see trellises. They'll see cuts, which were made largely by hand. And all that is still out there. 2019 is the 150th anniversary of the Transcontinental Railroad. Everything came together in Utah. Two wonderful efforts, one from the west, one from the east, taking a number of years, and it all culminated in a Promontory Summit, May 10th, 1869. We're hoping that many people will come over the summer and see the Promontory Summit, and uh, so that's what it's all about. Hopefully this will inspire people to think and to think big and to, to basically try to figure out what the next horizon is, what the next moonshot is, what the next you know, completion of a railroad is. I don't know what that is, but it's gonna be fun to see. Wow, there is like so much history out here and we're with all the right people to tell us about it. And you were afraid you were gonna be bored today. Well, I wasn't afraid. I just like, <laughs> when you're coming out here, like there's nothing out here. But there is. To me, there's just wide open space. I love this. Oh, it's fabulous. I'm a desert rat, you know. Oh, you are. Anyway, right now I want to tell you about the Outsiders Club. Rhea and I are so excited about this. This is a free part of our website. You sign up for it. You become a member, but it doesn't cost you anything. And you can go on there. You can download waypoints. You can look at a time lapse of this entire trip from the time we started to the time we end. And all of this stuff is yours free of charge. So go on our website at your leisure, AYLTV.com, check out The Outsiders, and right now let's move on to our Where To Adventure. There are only a handful of moments in human history whose impact can be felt through generations, drastically changing the lives of thousands or millions, for better or for worse. Today we are taking a look at how one of those such moments happened here on our very own soil. The Transcontinental Railroad was more than just a way to the new frontier. 
It was a testament to the human spirit, a glimpse at what we can do when we dream and work together. We're here at Golden Spike National Historical Park, and we are having a really big celebration for the 150th um, commemoration of the building of the Transcontinental Railroad. Yeah, being out here, you, you do kind of feel like you're part of history, um, even when you're out here and there's, there's hardly any visitors around at all. But um, the fact that this, this many people showed up because they want to be a part of that history and, and be here on the 150th, this historical site here in Utah connects us to the brave men and women of the past who stood in this exact spot and celebrated. And I believe it was today, May 10th, 1869, so it was 150 years ago. My favorite part has been just seeing all the people that are so excited to be here to celebrate, in my opinion, what is an incredible, uh, an incredible event and, and up there with one of the more one of the more historic, I got it buddy, one of the more historic achievements in United States history, including flight, the moon landing, uh, you name it, this is one of the more impressive and uh, amazing accomplishments and feats ever in I think the history of the United States. The spirit of the West didn't fade with the faces or celebrations past. Instead, we stand strong, remembering the amazing feat that made Promontory a place national historical significance. We use this as a way to connect to those who came before us, those who made the West home. We are in a sort of uh, recreation of a historical encampment that would have been um, sort of occupied by the railway workers of the time. Reading about it is one thing, but when you get more of a, a hands-on approach and really see people like, you know, just representing it properly, then it's it's much more intuitive and educational. The meeting of the Jupiter and the 119 revolutionized the West. With these amazing machines, settlement, trade, and travel exploded. And without them, our lives wouldn't be the same. These trains are more than beautifully painted history. They are integral parts of our past. Dead. To pilot something like this in the location that it's at is just, you know, kind of mind-blowing that I would read books on this subject and would hear about this place, but to think that I'm here reenacting, operating a locomotive that's a replica of an 1868 model on the actual spot where it operated 150 years ago is, you know, it, it, it kind of hits you. It's uh, something different. The paint schemes you see on them are as historically accurate as we can get them based on the latest research. Uh, all the brass is accurate, the gold leafing, um, and uh, almost down to the way they operate is almost identical to what you would have seen back then. Um, a lot of people when they come out here they're not entirely sure what to expect. Um, they know this is where something important happened, but you know um, it doesn't really set in until you start seeing some of those features. And I tell people you could be you could be here for a full day and still not get the full picture of it just because there's so much to see around here. Next time you feel like sharing the history of the West with your friends and family, you'll know just where to find it. For At Your Leisure, I'm Joe Davis. The new leader in off road utility, the completely reinvented Ranger XP1000. It's got the most power, the largest towing capacity, the highest ground clearance, and the best comfort and storage. Introducing the all new Polaris Ranger XP1000, the hardest working, smoothest riding Ranger ever built.
Give us the work no one else wants to do. We don't just go against the grain, we grow it. Give us the frontiers, the places where success is measured and pushed limits. Give us the middle of nowhere, where the only map is your buddy's tread marks. This life, no one's born ready for it. And we will see you next week on The County Seat. Welcome back to At Your Leisure. I'm Scott Huntsman. This is our What's New segment for today. Now, what's new is this Jeep JL. My customer wants to lift this vehicle and put some nice tires on. She wants a really cool look, but is really never gonna take it too much off road but we still want it to look good. We're gonna bring it up about two and a half inches. And we've got some 35 inch tires and some really cool wheels that we're gonna put on it. Now, what every Jeeper wants is something that looks like this. This Terraflex Jeep is the ultimate in off-road and on-road capability. If you've got a lot of money, you could put something in like this, but for today, we're going to do the budget build, which is why we're here at TerraFlex in West Jordan, Utah. They've got all the goods that we need to fix up this Jeep here and make it the budget boost that we want to give it. Let's go on inside. Let's go check out what they've got. All right, well, Dennis, we're obviously here in the warehouse, and this place is phenomenal. You, have, you guys have so many parts here. It's big is what we call it. Yes, big. very big. Like I say, inventory would really be a challenge. Yeah. I'm sure it is. <laughs> well, you know what? Yeah. They've, they've hooked us up with, with our spring kit, our lift kit. We've got our shocks. We've got all the brackets. We're ready to do this budget lift on the JL. What do you say we head back to the shop and start putting these parts totally on? Totally makes sense. Let's get them on the Jeep instead of standing here holding them. Hey, we're back at the shop. We've almost got this lift installed. Aaron and I have it just about complete. Now, this really wasn't too complex to get this in. It was just a matter of removing the shock absorbers, the sway bar links, and allowing the axle with jack and support to droop enough to get the springs out and the new springs back in. We have the new sway bar links installed. We have the jounce spacers installed and the shock is bolted up top. I'm just gonna finish the bottom one. The front axle is very similar to the rear, so we'll be doing the same process to the front. Then we'll get the tires on this and get right to alignment. So, last step, just get this shock, and it's a very good gas-charged cartridge. Okay, we're up at the front of the vehicle. We have the alignment heads installed. So we're gonna do a good alignment on this vehicle. With any suspension modification or lift kit that you install, alignment is critical. Align either to factory specs or whatever the specifications may be from the manufacturer of the product that you've installed. Then we're gonna get this out and we're gonna take a look and see how it turned out. Okay guys, we're outside with it. The alignment is done. We've taken it for a road test. This thing drives great, but I think most importantly, this looks fantastic, and it gives us the ability to run this 35-inch tire. We had $2,000 to do this with. These Tactic wheels came from Quadratech at $70 a piece. I was able to find a used set of tires, $500 for a set of five, and they still have 90% of the tread. It was a really lucky find, but I'm glad to have gotten them. It was a success. Now, if this job seems a little too much for you, Come and see us at Tunex here in South Jordan or West Valley, any of them in the Wasatch Front. We are a Terraflex dealer and we install their products as well as back them up. I'm Scott Huntsman at Tunex. More at your leisure in a moment. RVing is the only way to go, and Paris RV would like to introduce to you their high quality line of Lance campers and trailers since 1965. 
Lance has been committed to building campers and trailers that are second to none in quality, reliability, safety, and craftsmanship, and are considered to be best in class. Camping is about family, friends, and enjoying the outdoors. Come down and see us in our new line of Lance RVs at Paris RV South location at 5545 South State or online at parisrv.com. Wide open terrain, a full tank of gas, and someone to share it with. Perfect conditions to showcase our first ever Talon 1000R. Standing at nearly 69 inches wide, it's built for speed over rugged terrain. From rock crawl ravines to dry lake beds, dunes, and the miles of trail connecting them all. That's how life is better side by side. In the all new Talon 1000R. From Honda. That wasn't very far. Not at all. Welcome back to At Your Leisure, everybody. We're out here on the Transcontinental Railroad Tour, and we are just loving it. This is so very cool. Oh, look, we got hey. fans back there. <laughs> all right. Hey, peace out. <laughs> so we are stopped right here. This is a very interesting and different trellis. Actually, it is now a box culvert. In the 20s and 30s, they built some of these culverts in here to make them a little stronger. And this one is a stone culvert, which is made out of really big rocks. It's original too. Yep. Well, there's so much more to see. Let's hit the road. You're seeing very much what it would have been like yeah. in the 1860s. It's largely what the Chinese and the Mormon contractors and the Irish supervisors would have experienced here in 1860. Well, look closely and you can see a rather large railroad spike that wants to come out. And we're going past all the remnants of these different towns that used to be out here. And they used to have them every 10 miles, which just surprises me. It boggles my mind how much it took to make a steam locomotive run. It's nothing like the Hollywood movies, you know? No. So we have a limited number of images of historic terrace, even though it was a sizable town. But this is probably one of the more compelling images because you can see the mountain in the background and the mountain in the background of this historic photo of downtown Paris. This hotel, you can see it right at your feet. That's water pipe and sewer pipe. Wow. It's, yeah. just, it's hard to figure out how a building fell apart all the way over there and all the way over there. So, excuse me, I'm sorry, what, what is that? A headlight? Yep. What is that? That's, that, that's their headlight, right? Yep. First I thought it was like a clock. Coal fired. And so I'm gonna walk you into Chinatown and show you material culture, the Chinese experience, so you can understand. Fine China, look at that. So we're gonna leave it here for somebody else to discover, but there's stuff that's got printing on it, like Chinese dragons and stuff all over here in white China. So you can tell we are in Chinatown. Pretty cool, huh? This is a really neat, this is just really cool, I think. Something that you'd bring your family out to look at. I mean, this is Utah history, and it's like, it's world history. Chad, check out all this brick. Yeah. Why, don't you, why aren't you singing your Brick House song again? We're a brick house. Yeah, mm. so where is it? where did this come from, really quickly? This, this, actually, come from? this actually is part of the office in the shop. Oh, that's right. This is not Utah brick, they imported it. Yep, so came it's from California. California brick. Yep. yep, and that's why it's so airy. Yeah. In fact, just a stone's throw from here, not where our crowd is from the BLM and the, and the state uh, history office, but is our Trailhead Adventure, brought to you by Rocky Mountain ATVMC. They don't carry stuff like that there. Here it goes. 
It was more than 150 years ago that Abraham Lincoln signed the Pacific Railway Act of July 1, 1862. That created the original Union Pacific Railroad. With the historic stroke of a pen, the stage was set to open the American West to settlers and, in the process, unite the continent with the driving of the Golden Spike here in Utah. The Union Pacific ruled the rails through the 20th century, engineering some of the largest steam locomotives ever built. And they were built specifically to handle the steep, graded mountains of the West. You think about the moment of the driving of the Golden Spike 157 years ago, and that's a piece of American history and a piece of Union Pacific history. And so when it came time to decide what we're going to do big, to celebrate a big anniversary, what more can you do than bring back and refurbish this big boy locomotive? Twenty-five big boy steam locomotives were built exclusively for the Union Pacific, the first being delivered in 1941. Now, only seven remain intact, and they're on display around the country, while the last running big boy, number 4014, made its historical refurbished debut just last week. The Big Boy is the world's largest operating steam locomotive, 7,000 horsepower, 600 tons, and 134 feet long, 17 feet tall. It's just a massive power plant designed specifically for one purpose, and that's to haul massive tonnage from Ogden, Utah, right where we are, and working its way into Green River, Wyoming. But it's legendary in terms of what it was able to do and the horsepower and the dependability that it had when they were in service from 1941 until 1959. Big Boy 4014 ran for an astonishing 18 years of service with a travel distance of more than a million miles. And finally, it was given retirement in 1961. To bring the big boy back to life was no easy task because the parts for these steam locomotives are more rare than the trains themselves. You literally had to make the tools. I mean, it wasn't the size of wrench you needed and the size of ratchet you need for a typical automobile. You didn't have. And so, A, you had to make your tools, and B, you had to make many of the products that are going into it, from the pistons on through. So, a lot of things we had to uh, handcraft ourselves to make this work. So, uh, that's why. There's a map there to say how to do how we think we're going to do it. It imp improvised a lot along the way, but you'll see it chugging down the track today. We've been rebuilding this locomotive a little over two years. I have a team, there's nine of us, and we've been toiling away for a little over two years on this locomotive. We're a very small, hand-picked, elite crew, but we operate the locomotive, we rebuild the locomotive, we do all aspects of the servicing or any maintenance needs that it has when we're out in the field is handled all by us. The building of the railroad and the big boy contributed to the massive growth that Utah faced in the 20th century, with Ogden being one of the main stops on the journey west. To celebrate, Union Pacific brought the big boy and historic locomotive 844 together in Ogden to commemorate the golden spike and the uniting of America. The governor and others celebrated this historic moment, speaking about the power of uniting the nation through the railroad. Well, let's learn the lesson of dreaming big, of setting aside differences, coming together, working hard, and working together. And in doing so, we can accomplish anything. Now, the big boy will be making its way across Union Pacific lines throughout the country this summer. It's celebrating the history of the railroad and the uniting of our country 150 years ago. For At Your Leisure, I'm Terry Wood. What is it that gets us out here to the middle of nowhere? What makes us choose the sweltering heat? instead of our air-conditioned homes and swimming pools. Usually, it's just some friendly trash talk. And we wouldn't have it any other way. There's a little place on a Utah map where I was raised where my heart's at, where the sagebrush grows wild and high. 
the stars come out at night. Oh, there ain't nothing like being raised in the basin with a youth reservation, skin starvation, that Duchesne County life. You have the right machine, the best tires, and top-of-the-line gear to make it over the top and beyond. Make sure that you have the best fuel money can buy, too. Clear 91 ethanol free from Eagles Landing. Specially formulated for today's high-performance off-road engines. It's gas strong enough to stand up to any challenge and any warranty. Clear 91 protects your internal engine parts and keeps you years longer than ethanol blends. So go out of your way to stock up on Clear 91 ethanol free at Eagles Landing with four locations along I-15. Yeah, we're folks bound by traditions. Whether it's holiday time or vacation time, make sure that one of your traditions is a stop at the Creamery in Beaver, Utah. Delicious cheese direct from the factory, ice cream, tasty treats, crafts, and gifts of all kinds. And it's the perfect place to get a bowl of creamy mac and cheese. Start your new tradition the next time you're headed our way. The Creamery in Beaver, Utah. Farm, meat table. Chad, look at this cute little trestle. Uh huh. Yeah, don't fall in the cracks. Oh, that's right. It's only like six feet down. It's not gonna. It's not gonna six kill you. feet? Are you kidding me? Oh, this look, Rhea. Oh, look, look. I know. This is so fun. Yeah. <laughs> really, there's just something to do out here in the middle of nowhere. This is this timber's <laughs> still pretty heavy. I mean, I look know. at the size of this stuff. Yeah. So this is so the train actually came over this. Is it sure? Yeah. Yeah. So cool. So, several tons of it all at once. Just think, it, a big steel thing lined with bricks. Now let's take a look at our calendar of events. On June 22nd, out at the Equestrian Park in South Jordan, is the 11th annual Ride the Brainwave event presented by Children and the Earth. The event has a 5K race, motorcycle rally, UTV ride, a car show, and a concert series. Wow, take your pick. There are tons of prizes, vendors, all kinds of activities for the family, and best of all, all the proceeds go to a good cause. So come on down and show your support. Okay, let's take a look at next week's show. Next week, we are back to the heart of the Red Rock country as we visit the first ever annual Canab Red Rock ATV Jamboree. Then Rhea and I are off to the seas as we take a tour of Italy on a motor sailing yacht. Finally, Rhys Stein takes us back in time as he visits one of the most iconic streets in American history in colonial Williamsburg, Virginia. Of course, not everything was building up to the railroad. Some of them had to, actually had to dig it a little bit. Yeah, there's a big friggin' blasting hole right here. Yeah, this in. is a cut. This is an area where you have to go below the natural grade to keep the grade of the locomotives nice and flat. So they just kind of dug a path right through the mountain here. Yeah. And of course, we're not going to go in there because there's a mama eagle, and I hear that they get like really yeah, persnickety. They'll, they'll pick you up and fly you away. Like giant tsetse flies, <laughs> yes. Anyway, this has been a lot of fun today, and we hope you've had a blast with the show. It's amazing. you got to get out here with your family, your friends, your 4x4s, and just enjoy the scenery and the history. That's true. Actually, the road's graded well enough. You could probably make it in a car if you took it nice and easy, but man, soaking up the scenery is well worth it. Yeah. you get, you want to take your time. That's true. Remember, as we tell you every week, there's adventure around every single band. you just got to get out there and create your own adventure. At, at your, your leisure. leisure. We're going that way because the eagle is that way.